What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am kicking off my monthly builds series for 2022. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that this series has suffered a little bit over the past year and a half or so because GPUs have been largely unavailable. That is unfortunately still the case, although we do have some optimism, some reason to be hopeful for this year. But for right now, I'm just gonna focus on some individual parts deals. I do have a build for you guys, minus a GPU, that is uh, pretty compelling, I think, right now. And of course, all the parts I'm gonna talk about today are linked in the video description, so feel free to check those out. Excellent! A few things to mention as we get started. First is that I'm just going over individual parts and at least one parts list today. So if you'd like to see me actually build a system, check out my builds playlist, which I'll link down in the description. Also, I have my most recent how to build a PC video, which is from 2020. I will be refreshing that this year, but that's also linked down there. And you can also see other helpful videos, tutorials, like how to set up a new PC if you've just built one for the first time. Also, if you're hunting for deals and price checking and reality checking, Camel 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 is a great website that will show you pricing history for Amazon, Newegg, I think some other retailers as well. So make sure to take advantage of that. PC Part Picker also, if you look up individual components, has a great price history thing that can show you, am I getting a good deal right now or not? So right out of the gate, let's start with the big dilemma right now, which is graphics cards. And unfortunately, prices have not shifted very much in terms of what's available at retail to just add to your cart and buy right away. There are various ways to sort of hunt down graphics cards. Some are more effective than others. But the fact is something as entry level as a GTX 1650, which should be a nice entry level price of around maybe 150 to 170 dollars and all these are going for pretty much double that around 325 at least and a lot of them are more towards the 360 ish dollar range that's way too much in my opinion to pay for a card like a 1650. So my advice to most people right now in terms of graphics cards is to take a look at the used market, see if you can find something secondhand, but buyer beware as always. See if you can get by with an existing graphics card. If you do have one, maybe you can extend its lifespan a little bit longer. Third would be to use integrated graphics, and for that I'd recommend the AMD Ryzen 5600G for now. It doesn't have the greatest gaming, but it can get you by for some basic entry level 720 or 1080 gaming until graphics card prices come down. And then of course you have the option of buying a pre-built PC, and if you do need a full gaming PC right now, that's probably gonna be your best bet. It does suck some of the joy out of building it yourself and choosing your own individual components, but while the crazy marked up prices for graphics cards have affected pre-builds as well, the premium you'll pay there isn't quite as much as buying directly at retail. The second choice you'll need to make if you're building from scratch is what CPU to use, and we're still uh, in an environment where you have Intel or AMD as options. We also just passed CES 2022, so both Intel and AMD have made a bunch of statements about what their plans are for this this year, and the short answer is that AMD only has one CPU planned as kind of a stopgap that we're expecting around mid-year, I'd expect it by May or June. That's the 5800X 3D, and then Intel probably isn't gonna have a new series of CPUs until later in the year. However, those should still slot into LGA 1700 motherboards. So the situation right now between AMD and Intel, if you're building a system that you plan to upgrade in the future, is that Intel is actually a little bit more of a better bet because you should at least have one more generation of CPUs launching there on LGA 1700 motherboards, whereas with AMD, their next gen platform is gonna be AM5, and there's a lot of excitement about that, but that's not gonna be available probably until the end of the year. The last thing I wanna point out before we get into the deals is that I'm mostly talking about new hardware right now. Yes, there is slightly older hardware that's maybe a generation or two old that you can sometimes find at retail, or like I said, the secondary market, and the secondary market has a bunch of question marks that I can't always advise you guys on. So that's why as we look at CPUs, I'm pretty much looking at the current generation that's available, although I will mention slightly older options as I come to them. So for AMD, the 5600X is actually not going to be recommended for me right now. It's about $290 on Amazon as well as Newegg. Um, not a horrible price by any stretch, but I just feel like uh, if you're buying new right now, Go for Intel if you're going more towards the entry level. 5800X likewise has come up in price. This was selling for as little as 300 to 330 or $340 around Black Friday timeframe. It's now back up to 370. Same price on Newegg, although you need a promo code for that right now. And that is probably gonna have ended by the time you guys watch this video. But, but for me, even the 5900X has kind of lackluster right now. Again, just because the price isn't very much off of the original MSRP, which is $550. This is now below 500 bucks during Black Friday. It's now back up to 540. So 
the AMD CPU that I'm recommending right now is for people who are gonna be doing more than just gaming with their system, who actually need more cores and thread for doing some actual work, video rendering, or that kind of thing. And for that, the 5950X is still just an absolute beast. And this is also one that the price hasn't changed very much from Black Friday. It was at 720 on Black Friday. It's 730 right now on both Amazon and Newegg. Actually, it looks like Newegg does have it for 720, but that's a promo code that I think will have expired by the time you guys see this video. But the 5950X is a beast if you can afford it and if you have a use case for all those cores and threads. And then the 5600G is 240 bucks right now, and this one has an integrated GPU. This isn't going to have the same performance. It is a six core, but it will have slightly worse performance than the 5600X. However, it is 60 bucks cheaper. Same price over on Amazon. And again, this has integrated graphics. So if you don't have a graphics card and you need something to get you by for now, this is a solid choice. Now on the Intel side, like I said, CES 2022 just happened. And they just announced a huge stack of 12th gen CPUs to go along with the 12th gen K SKUs that they launched at the end of 2021, like the 12600K. 12700K and 12900K. There are definitely going to be some viable options here. However, the issue is that they're sort of trickling out. Those are locked for overclocking. However, even if you use one of Intel's newer budget series chipsets like H670 or B660, you can still do memory overclocking. So you can plug in your XMP profile, uh, which is a great step up from how it used to be, which kind of sucks. So, so even though the 12400, which is a six core 12 thread processor, doesn't really have reviews out yet, based on the performance of the 10400 and the 11400, I'm going to tentatively recommend this as sort of a budget or entry level option. It's about $210 or $209 on Newegg. So definitely don't buy that on Amazon right now because it's about $24 more expensive. And if you pair this with a selection of other parts from today's video, uh, you can actually get a really solid core system minus a GPU for around $540 or $550. If you want to step up a bit from there, you can get the 12600K, which is fully unlocked for overclocking. Really, really solid CPU here. Uh, I did a full review on it, so you guys can check that out if you're interested. Available for less than $300 or 296 I guess, right now. Again, both on Amazon and Newegg, so I would recommend this over the 5600X on the AMD side right now. The 12700K, also a solid option. This one has eight P cores, so eight cores and 16 threads on the P core side, plus another four cores and four threads on the E cores. $415 isn't a crazy markdown or anything for this CPU right now, but if you are gonna be doing a little bit more work as well as gaming, the 12700K might be worth your while to upgrade to. And I guess Newegg has had it for as little as about $400 but again, that sale is probably gonna be over by the time you guys see this. If you have a graphics card to use though and you're looking at the 12700K, then consider saving $25 or so with the 12700KF. This one doesn't have integrated graphics, so that may or may not be helpful for you. If you don't need the iGPU, then it's a little bit less money. If you do need it, then just stick with the 12700. And then there's the 12900K, and this was one that I'm not really recommending. Um, for one, it's not even available at Amazon. A new egg, it's about $619, and that is apparently a sale that's also going to end soon. Simply put though, if you need more cores and threads, I would go with the 5950X at this point versus the 12900K. And this one also runs significantly hotter than like a 12700K or a 12600K because it's got all those cores, P cores and E cores. So that's kind of a rundown of the CPUs I would recommend right now. And uh, hopefully next month, uh, things will flesh out a little bit more in terms of all the CPUs that Intel announced just uh, in the past week. And we'll have more options there. Hopefully more of them will also be in stock. Let's move through the rest of the components. Uh, I, I dropped one CPU cooler in here. Do note that with the 12400 non-K, you get a CPU cooler in the box. So that's also a little bit of a savings uh, that you can get by with. It's not gonna be an awesome cooler, but then down the line, you can maybe upgrade to something like the Master Liquid ML280. This is an $80 closed loop, uh, 280 millimeter radiator cooler. Even has LJ1700 mounting available, but uh, you will need the contact Cooler Master for that bracket. That's a good deal there. We have some motherboards here. Like I said, the B660 and H670 motherboards uh, from Intel have just been announced. So these are starting to trickle out. This is an Asus Prime B660 Plus. It's a D4, which means DDR4 rather than DDR5. DDR5 is still way too expensive to recommend right now. And this one's $140. Again, brand new board that's hard to recommend directly, at least without a caveat or two, and, and pointing out that this board is not widely reviewed yet. However, you do get a couple full-size M.2 slots down there at the bottom. There's also an M.2 2230 slot right here where you can add on a Wi-Fi card if you so desired. And then another one up here that has a heat sink on it. Not crazy good in terms of I.O., but you do get an HDMI and a display port out, even an analog VGA out. 
Oh, that might be useful if you have a really old monitor, I guess. So, like I said, since B660 just launched, there's gonna be a bunch more motherboards with this chipset, or H670 chipset is also one that's gonna be worth looking at if you want more connectivity. But $140 is less expensive than most of the Z690 boards that are out there right now. So, we're going for a budget build here, and that's what I'd recommend. I threw a few more motherboards into the mix there. This is just an MSI MPG X570 that I've been recommending for a while. A little bit more expensive than it was around Black Friday by about $10 or $15, but still a solid board for 174 or so. If you're going for AMD, then consider the ASUS B550 Plus. It's about $136. Just showing that there are pretty solid B550 motherboards. You used to be able to find them for around $110 to $120. I didn't find too many of those right now, at least that weren't significantly cut back. But it is nice to see that Intel now has the B660 motherboards providing some competition uh, to AMD in the budget range. Finally, here's a Z590 motherboard if you do find a good deal on like an 11th gen or a 10th gen Intel CPU. Uh, this one's only $165 and a solid all around board that will get you all the functionality you will need for your new PC build. Let's talk about memory next, another place where prices have continued to come down. So that's definitely really good news. We have a Team T-Force Vulcan 16 gig kit here, DDR4 3600, I think it's cast latency 18, which isn't the best, but it's only $60. So uh, that's, that's why it's a good deal. Silicon Power still has this value gaming DDR4 kit, 3200 speed, cast latency 16, it's only $50. This is an existing deal that I've covered the past two, three months, um, but sort of a starting off point if you're looking at a 16 gig DDR4 kit. And then if you want more memory and also dual rank dims and also a kit that will pretty much be guaranteed to uh, plug in and work with the XMP settings uh, for AMD or Intel, consider this G-Skill -G Ripjaws 5 series kit. This one was down to 135 or 140 during Black Friday. It's only come up a little bit from there. but like. Like I said, this has all the juicy specs that you'd really want if you're looking for a little bit more in a memory kit. I guess it's only really missing RGB, but you know, our, the RGB premium can be can be pretty expensive. I think the best memory deal right now though are these Crucial Ballistic 16 gig kits. These are DDR4 3200, cast latency 16, available in three different colors, black, white, and red, and Crucial is selling them directly on their website for $51 per kit. The only Downside is the available shipping is in two to three weeks, so you need to have a little bit of patience here. But if you do have that patience, then you can uh, save some money on a really solid kit of memory. Let's go over some SSDs. Uh, if you're looking for a higher end PCIe 4.0 SSD that's going to hit really nice read and write speeds of uh, around 7,000 megabytes per second, then here's the Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte for $180. If you're looking for even more capacity, the WD Black two terabyte SN850 is available for 300, uh, just shy of $320, another solid deal. If you're looking more towards the budget or entry level, we have a 500 gig Crucial P2 for only $43. This has come down again, another four, five, six dollars um, from what it was at Black Friday. 500 gigs is enough for your operating system and a decent amount of games. Uh, so this one will kind of get you up and running. There are other capacities like one terabyte for a hundred bucks, two terabytes for $200. But as you might see here, one terabyte NVMe SSDs, PCIe Gen 3 ones that are kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of read and write speeds and this uh, Mushkin enhanced Helix L is about 1700 to 2100 megabytes per second for read and writes and it's down to $84. And if you check the video description, there's also a promo code down there that should bring it down by another $5 or so. I don't know how long that promo code will last, but check that out. That'll get it down to about 78. But the point is, in my brain, the entry level price for a one terabyte solid middle of the road PCIe Gen 3 uh, drive is now closer to $80 than it was to 100. So that's also good news. A few more products here. We have a Corsair case, which I was really excited about at first because it's $55 for the 4000D. You gotta get it in the white version. Black version is also available, but uh, again, this is a sale that ends really soon. So I can still recommend the 4000D and it's a good price for 75 bucks. But you guys will have to let me know if that promo code is still sticking around tomorrow. If it goes away and you still wanna stick to a $55 case, the Fractal Design Focus G is also a really solid case. It does not have a tempered glass side panel. That's probably the, the one main drawback, but available in a variety of colors for $55. And power supplies. We have some really solid uh, budget options here too. EVGA has a 600 watt, 80 plus bronze, unit that's 50% off down to $35. Non-modular, so uh, make sure you've got room in your case to, to tuck away the cables. But it does have all black cables and a solid unit from EVGA. And 600 watts is enough for most GPUs as long as you're not getting too high-end. 
recommend. Uh, and in terms of power supplies, what I always recommend people do is look at the graphics card you have or the graphics card you want to get, recommended power supply wattage for that, and then use that as a determination for how much wattage you should get in a power supply. Going over by 50 or 100 watts isn't a bad idea too. So for example, if you know you're gonna be sticking with a lower end graphics card that only has a 400 or 450 watt uh, requirement, you can still, for $35, get the EVGA BQ, which is less wattage, but it is modular, or at least po partially modular, and that might be worth it to you. For my money, I would just go for the 600 watt version, but you got both of those available. And then if you're looking for a higher end graphics card, like something like an RTX 3080, if you can somehow get your hands on one of those, then you're gonna want more wattage in your power supply, like 750 watts is the recommendation there. And Silverstone has a nice 80 plus bronze rated unit for $65. I threw a couple peripherals in here at the end. Razer's Death Adder Essential is still $20. This was like a Black Friday deal that they apparently didn't sell enough of, so it's still available. And I like the Razer Death Adder, so a solid mouse for 20 bucks. And then Best Buy has the Logitech G502 here Hero Special Edition Wired Optical Gaming Mouse usually is $80, it's down to $35, so that's also linked in the video description. So like I said, here's my Intel build, which is designed to be an upgradable to a gaming PC build. It says gaming PC parts here, but honestly, the 12400, you're not gonna be able to do too much gaming on it unless you're doing really light gaming or playing something like Minecraft. However, for $210, you're getting the latest Intel architecture, you're gonna get a CPU that can easily handle an add-in graphics card if you get that to upgrade to in the future, and the 12400 does have an IG GPU, so you can plug in your video outs into the motherboard and you can use the system right out of the gate uh, for this price of $543. And I'm just pairing that with one of the memory kits, which were around $50 to $60, that Asus Prime B660 motherboard for $140. I put the Corsair 4000D white case here, which is $55, but if that's not still available, you can swap in the Fractal Focus G, the Crucial P2 500 gig SSD and the EVGA 600 watt power supply. Grand totals $543. And with that, even if you had to bite the bullet and buy an entry level graphics card, something like a GTX 1650 for around $350, that would still be a $900 gaming PC. Granted, it should be more like a $700 gaming PC, but at least it's a gaming PC for less than $1,000 in 2022. So those are my recommendations to start out 2022. And again, links are down in the video's description. On your way out, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. You can subscribe to my channel for more tech videos like this one coming at you real soon. Don't forget to tune in for my weekly tech news series, which is also kicked off again for 2022. Thank you guys so much for watching this video as always, and we'll see you in the next one.